Question. Uh, first, I want to sh thank you for representing and sharing with us the perspective of what's taking place in the San Pedro Bay and the Port of L.A., but also your partner, the Port of Long Beach. You know, I'm very honored to represent the Port of Long Beach. Uh, at one time, I represented in the state legislature both ports, so I'm very familiar with the port complex, which really, as you pointed out, handles 40% of the nation's imports that come into the country and about 30% of the nation's exports come through this. And a, um, while the ports are doing very well on a number of metrics, they're doing, you know, they're setting records in cargo volume, uh, they're investing in infrastructure, as you pointed out, to handle the bigger uh, and uh, the ships, they still face significant challenges in terms of congestion, and also in terms of international competition. So I think what you've advocated for, I, I totally support, and I uh, was very glad to hear Mr. Graves, my Congress, my colleague from uh, Louisiana, uh, talk about some of the specific projects. Um, that, and as you're advocating for a more equitable allocation of the resources of the harbor maintenance tax revenues, they're going to help our country, uh, our ports make the investments that they need to grow. And you've already indicated kind of the flexibility that you'd like to see uh, in terms of meeting your uh, the growing demands and to being able to compete. Can you go into a little bit about how this will impact congestion? If if is there a relationship between using the, the harbor maintenance facts in a more flexible way? and really dealing with the facts of congestion and also international competition. Those are the two issues I'd like you to respond to. Yes, thank you for your question, Congressman Lowenthal. On the area of congestion, it's been a topic for our, our port over a number of years, and there are three ways to approach eliminating congestion. One is through a concept that we use called supply chain optimization, bringing all parties together with the natural convening powers that we have to work on better ways to move the cargo more fluidly and remove those intermediate bottlenecks that have plagued us for some time. Second is digitization, and a project that we have embarked upon creating what we are now terming as the port optimizer, one that can aggregate disparate sources of data, give us a deeper line of sight as to the cargo coming our way so we can better plan our human capital and our assets. And then thirdly is the physical infrastructure. Our ability to bring these ships in on time and work in a Windows-based system, meaning that you have an appointment when your ship comes in. You're to arrive at 8 a.m. on Monday and you're to leave at 8 a.m. on Thursday. By keeping the integrity of those ship windows is largely a function of being able to bring the ships into an area that can accommodate the size of that vessel and work the vessel as succinctly as possible, meaning having those fortified wharfs and that deep water. So the limited expanded use that I have referenced here on several occasions is just for that purpose. And all three activities that we are pursuing, Congressman, are interrelated. We want to do better and smarter work. We want to bring information technology into the port environment, not just in Los Angeles, but nationwide and having the physical capabilities both landside as well as in the water to carry out the first two. Thank you. I, I just want to follow up a little bit on that. Um, for you to kind of explain, I think you've already said it, but I think it's really important that um, by giving you this limited expansion of, of flexibility, how is this going? And we're asking the rest of the nation kind of to, and other ports to support this. Uh, the question is, how is this going to affect manufacturers and also customers throughout the nation? Is this just good for, you know, the larger ports, or, or what's the impact on the rest of the nation by giving the little bit of extra flexibility? All right. Uh, two parts to that answer. Uh, number one, under our recommendation, ports geographically by designation or by size will receive the same, if not more, money under our recommendation to this subcommittee and the broader committee. Secondly, what it does for our mutual customers is, A, it gives them certainty that when you order goods and it comes through our port complex, whoever that may be, you will have certainty that it will arrive upon a schedule that you have designed with your service provider. And secondly, in that vein, what it does for those customers is it delivers value. 
The folks that come through Los Angeles, as an example, pay more than $200 million a year in harbor maintenance tax, yet they don't see necessarily the dividends returned in further investment in that infrastructure, in this case, in the water infrastructure that they desire. So it's about delivering value back to them as well. Thank you, and I yield back. Thank you. I now recognize Mr. Woodall for five